Scranton, top of West Mountain in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Good morning, everybody. This is 94.3 FM, The Talker, and this is Sanity Check with Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. The number here is 888-577-4487, 888-577-4487. If you want to start your weekend off right, blow off a little steam. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Lou. It's quite an interesting uh a current event going on in our nation, and once again, I think we have an administration that might be a little bit questionable, don't you think, Lou? Absolutely, absolutely, and it's one of the things we'll start right off with that, Michael. Certainly, uh, the Clive Bundy uh, stuff that's going on out in Nevada, and um, I, I, I have to feel for what's going on out there as anybody that's listening to this show uh, over the going on three years now. Knows I I lived in Montana for 25 years. You were out in Texas. It's a different lifestyle. Certainly in Nevada, it's different. And and I think what's getting me more and more and more, Michael, and I think as always in in all our shows, we try to bring it all together one way or the other and and bring it it all back to the same thing. I constantly keep hearing um, about we are a nation of laws. And and that just that that really gets under my core a little bit because as as much as we continue to say that over and over and over again, and where perhaps what's going on in Nevada, uh, there are laws that have not been followed. Um, when when I hear people on the media constantly talking, you know, we are a nation of laws. Is that really true? And you know, when we look at when we look at the immigration. Are we following the laws, our immigration laws? We're not. When we looked at Fast and Furious, and it goes on and on and on, and all the laws that are set up, set up to be, you know, administered, you know, haphazardly, and, and that's the problem when we don't follow the Constitution. Well, you know, Lou, and those are all great points, and what we continually to find in this administration is, is the fact that they pick and choose which laws they want to enforce. And those that they want to enforce, they do quite vigorously. You know, and I was pondering and having a discussion with my brother yesterday, and you know, a great point was brought up: is that we have a group of hardworking people, Clyde Bundy, in Nevada, whose family for 140 years have been doing the type of raising their cattle the way they have, and now suddenly it's an issue. He can't have his cattle on government land, and yet we continue to allow illegal immigration, illegal immigrants, to cross into our lands and to use those lands, and yet our citizens can't use those lands. And that really, really has me upset, Lou, that this administration, actually it's in our face attitude now, Lou. There is absolutely no regard for the laws that you mentioned. There's no regard for the American people. The only regard is the fact that we continue, that they continue to use whatever laws happen to be handy. And if those laws aren't handy to promote their agendas, they simply use regulations through various agencies like the IRS, the EPA, this turtle down in Nevada is an example of that, which we know is not the reason for why the government's doing this to the Bundy family. And I think this is really where the questions began, is what is the ultimate goal of this administration? I believe I know what it is. It's to completely transform America. And then, of course, you know, we have to throw the race card out in the process, Lou, and, and we have talked many times about how that is completely been used in a negative way, not to really promote equality amongst the citizens of our nation, but to really use their race, a particular race, to promote their agenda, Lou. And I think it's absolutely disgusting at what I'm seeing now that's going on in our nation. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying that our, the eyes of our nation are starting to awaken, Lou. Uh, I think they are, Michael, and 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 the whole race thing is is constantly a, a smokescreen. And and personally, and I and I think a lot of people are starting to feel the same way about this. I, I'm I'm really sick and tired of this. I'm, I'm really tired of constantly every time that you bring something up, whether it's against Holder, whether it's against Obama, it's always has to do with with race, race, race. And 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 I know it, and you know it. Uh, this this is just a smokescreen. But even more so than that, people are starting to lose faith. And they probably have been losing faith in 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 our judicial system. You know, yeah. certainly later on today we have uh, a Tara Koval, uh who who did the uh, a gag order uh, piece for us in the Wilkesbury paper. She's in studio today, and we're going to talk about a little bit more about this whole custody for cash and what's going on for that. But you know, it, it's the, it's it's the whole judicial system as a whole, and and the way we enforce 
our laws. I mean, when you see what's going on, they want to disarm us. You know, you have people out there. It's so discouraging to see people out there. You know, the dogs are out there. You know, you, how, how do you fight against that? Because if, if you raise your voice, you're going to be thrown in jail, that you're some kind of criminal, you know, either going to be shot. So, I mean, the, the outcome is not going to be good. But then once again, what happens is, is that when we look at this whole thing and you say, why are they enforcing the laws or what laws are they enforcing? And then and then you just lose faith in the whole system. I mean, you have the gun running going on down there with Fast and Furious. We have Benghazi. We have the IRS scandals. And then all of a sudden now we're supposed to the whole mantra. (laughs) I think that's what gets me more than anything else. The whole mantra, you know, is we're a nation of laws. Well, it's it's been hijacked. And and until we start standing up and it goes to everything Michael that we've been talking about. And, you know, whether it's whether it's getting smuckered down not having, you know, ballot access the right way, whether it's Clyde Bundy, what's happening out in Nevada, fast you know, we we keep bringing it back and and unless we follow the constitution and, and and follow our laws then everything else falls down everything else falls apart you listen to the sanity check 8885774487 so michael you know yes it is it 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 does get frustrating and then when i watch what's going on it's it's it, it's even more so because it it just drilled into your head one after another why aren't people staying standing up and saying Supposedly we are. It, it would be great if we are a nation of laws, but we're not a nation of laws. We're not following our laws. I mean, we just have lawlessness, and it's only being, you know, it, it's only being administered as, as as the powers wish them to be administered. Lou, you're absolutely right. You know, it's it's very interesting in raising children. You know what that's like, and and you know, my son came out with a typical answer that so many of us have, and of course, I got on him. It was like, well, why should we care? It's not affecting us. Ooh. And, yeah, so, so, of course, you've got the lecture on that. But, you know, I quickly was reminded <laughs> by, by the statement you always use, you know, an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere. You know, and I went on to explain to him that, you know, eventually it's at our back door. You know, eventually it's going to affect us if we don't stand up. And I think it's that, that, that internal spirit that, that God has given us that we as, as people want to be free. And it's always been that battle against you know, freedom or tyranny. And really, I know that we are right here, right now in this battle. And, and it's, that, it's that, that internal feeling that you want to pick up your guns and march to Nevada and help these people. Because this is really where I think perhaps we have a president that doesn't understand, you know, the real feeling, the real true hearts of these people, that they love their independence. And you know, living out in, in a type of culture like Montana, like Nevada, where things are wide open. These people have been self-sufficient. They depend on no one but themselves, and they certainly don't want to have to depend on government. So now you start to strip those rights away, and now, now it doesn't matter anymore whether the end result is death. What matters is the fact that I'm going to fight for my freedom, because this is really what matters in the end, Lou. And this is the lecture that my, my son got from me yesterday, that this cannot continue to happen, the apathetic attitude that our people have to just say, oh, well, but, but this is happening. This is what we fought about overseas. This is what we fought about, you know, in Iraq. This is what we fought about in Europe. This is, this is really, really what we have held dear to our hearts as Americans to fight exactly what's happening in Washington today. And I do believe and agree with you, Lou, that there is eye-opening experience that people are now who never were political beings are now starting to look and say, wait a minute, this is eerie. This sounds awful familiar, like, I don't know, the 1930s in Germany? You know, and of course, now suddenly I'll be a racist by, by mentioning <laughs> these things. And, and, and what, what we find out is, Lou, that this administration has intentionally defined things the way they want them defined. For example, terrorism. Lou, you and I would be considered terrorists. You know, the Independent Gazette would be considered terrorists. Based on their definition, Lou, so that they can manipulate the people who want to speak out against tyranny. And this is really what encourages me, Lou, and I know one of the things that encourages you to continue on, to continue to press forward to get the truth out to our people. Yeah, you touched on so many different things here. Certainly the NDAA, Michael, and we're not going to get on into that today, but certainly the provisions in the NDAA and and how individuals like you, like me, like X, are, are defined 
uh, whether you know you're a terrorist, not a terrorist, and 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 we've we've been on that for for quite some time, and and certainly looked at some of those provisions, and and certainly you can be defined. I mean, if you use too much cash, for goodness sakes, I mean you could be defined as 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 a terrorist. So you know the, the it 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 is scary, and and what gets to me, Michael, I, I just want to bring back this again. When you look at those old pictures of Tiananmen Square and, and you see what's happening yeah. in the Ukraine now and, and you see you see individuals, individuals probably not much different than you and me, out there going up against what I mean, what are you gonna go up against? Tanks, the dogs, yeah. a- and Drone. and if you stand drones. drones and if you stand up, then you're the ones that are the terrorists. And then, and then, and that, and, and so where's that balance? Where does that balance come in where we say, no, we have a right. You have a right to stand up. And yet, you know, we talk about disarming folks. You hear some of the, some of these politicians and, and these statists that constantly just keep banging the drums about let's disarm the citizens. Well, once you disarm the citizens, then you have, th- th- then you have no choice at all. Then, uh, then, then you truly are standing out there with your hands in the pocket as the tanks roll over you. I mean, when you start looking at what's going on, and I do want to throw this out, Michael, the factory, uh, uh, Factoryville Sportsman's uh, uh, Club is 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 going to have a bus. There's a Second Amendment rally on Tuesday, the 29th. Uh, just go to their website, and and you can see uh, there's a bus that's going to be leaving from Viewmont Mall. But once again, these are important things. I mean, you have to, you know, we go to these rallies and 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 we try to raise awareness, but certainly sooner or later. You have to get these politicians and the people that we elect and why it's so important to have a free and independent press, why it's so important to have free and equal elections, constantly keep bringing it back to all these things that that's, you know, that that's why it's so important to be able to 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 get our message out. And and, and we're we're proud to have been able to do that. You're right, Lou. And and certainly that I think it's already been proven how well an independent newspaper media can be effective against lawmakers. And I think we are to the point that, you know, we've got the ruling class versus the working class. And even, you know, Lou, what really discourages me or really gets me burning is that we've got one party who is ruling, who is just running right over the Constitution, and we've got the Republican Party who sits back and watches it happen. And they have a bunch of big talking points, and they get all fired up, and yet nothing is ever done. So what we need is some really brave people like the Clyde Bundys of the world who end up in Washington telling the ruling class it's time to lose, to give over your reign, that this belongs to the American people. That's what our Constitution says, we the people. You know, and our national anthem says the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I'm I'm looking for those politicians that are the brave, and I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to find it right in the American people, exactly what we're seeing in Nevada. You know, and I begin to wonder historically, Lou, if this is just the beginning of the outrage of the American people to finally stand up against the federal government and say, enough, whatever it takes, whatever the sacrifice, whatever I need to do, I'm no longer taking the tyrannical attitude that this government has had. And the blame goes on both the Republican and the Democratic Party, Lou. And we go right and, and then you political have system a, as a whole. As a whole. And then we have, like you said, the, the media, who is more worried about the beeping noise at the bottom of the ocean than they are what's going on in Nevada. And it really has me angry, Lou, and you could see it in the faces of the people who are paying attention. I just want to throw a plug out there. Yesterday, we put up our T-shirt, the Gold Butte Militia Unisex T-shirt, and you can find that at the Muckraker Trading Post. It's really pretty cool shirt, Michael. So our Muckraker News, you can go to Muckraker News, and uh, we have our trading post. What a cool name for our our, our store. <clears throat> and I think it goes uh, it goes right to what's happening, uh, certainly out west there. But uh, it 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 has uh, the steer there with, uh, you know, uh, and, and and, and the Nevada sign on it. It's a really pretty cool shirt. So if you're looking to uh, get something and 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 maybe uh, wear or, or support, show your support for what may perhaps is going out uh, in Nevada, you go to Muckrake at Trading Post. You talked about the media too, Michael. In, in the news this past week, certainly uh, they're once again talking about setting limits on contributions to uh, political campaigns. 
We have a lot of new people that listen to us. Uh, that that I know, Mike, uh, only because of the feedback we're getting, certainly on the stories that we're writing, whether it's on gag orders or custody for cash, and people from all political uh, uh, spectrums uh, across uh, across the aisles. And 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 in doing so, sometimes we like to help inform folks. And and I know uh, on the surface of this, when we say how. Why is it right? Why is it right for a millionaire or a billionaire to be able to spend millions upon millions of dollars in a campaign? Well, once you start limiting that, is it fair? Is it right? Do you want your only news to come then from the MSNBCs of the world, from the Scranton Times or the AP? And that's why when we look at this, I just want folks to start just thinking about this. And, and you know, before you jump to conclusions about why, why you need to have uh, or, or you don't need to have regulations on who has a right for free speech, because once you start limiting one, you're really empowering others. And I would love to have that conversation with anybody who wants to call, and, and that's 888-577-4487 on that particular topic. Why do we need to limit or not limit political contributions? Because in my opinion, when you do, what we're really doing is empowering those that are already in power. We've talked about the puff pieces that MSNBC could do or CBS does or ABC on their political agendas. Michael, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll have Mr. X on the phone. We're going to be talking a little bit about this uh does the Fed need to continue to pump money into the market to keep that pumped up? What's happening with inflation? Do we really have inflation? Uh, meat prices going up. Uh, according to the government, uh, we have no inflation. We'll be back. You listen to Sanity Check. Edward, Terry, and Lou, they are Sanity Check. Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM, The Talker. So listen to Don't listen to a word I say. We're back. 94.3 FM, the talk of the Sanity Check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike. And we have Mr. X on the phone. Good morning, X. Morning, guys. You know, I love when you guys have conversations. Sometimes I think I have a topic that I'd like to hit on, and then you bring up <laughs> something that makes me uh, divert myself into another path. You know, we were talking about this Hillary Clinton shoe episode. And, you know, th you want to know what the real story is? It's not that somebody threw a shoe at Hillary Clinton. <laughs> it's what could Hillary Clinton be saying to the scrap recycling industry because she's such an expert on that would warrant paying her tens of thousands of dollars? It's just like when she spoke to the National uh, Association of Realtors a few months right after. I think it was like maybe a week or so after she left the, her uh, State Department gig. You know, again, bans the press from showing up, confiscating cell phones so nobody could, you know, report on what's going on there. What what insights could this woman have to being a realtor that would warrant this amount of attention? But really what we're looking at is this is a political payoff scheme whereby in order to curry favors, I mean, you know, somebody's probably thinking, well, look, if Hillary Clinton gets elected, she'll be favorable to the scrap metal recyclers or – She'll make it so that they won't get rid of the, the home interest mortgage deduction. But these are just political payoffs in any other way. I mean, if anything, I'd almost have more respect if she was taking the stuff in a paper bag because because at least I know she's taking a bribe in a direct way. This way, it's just, it's just a show and dance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think we're also seeing this right in Nevada, too, actually. I think those are great points because some of the research I was doing last night you know, shows if it is accurate, you know, that Harry Reid, you know, has, has promised some of this land to solar outfits that, that the Bundys are trying to raise their cattle on. You know, you, you look at the, the oil and gas industry has, you know, has, and these are just questions, has there been deals brokered with Harry Reid to put money in his pocket, not in the interest of the citizens, just like Hillary, but in the interest of their own self. And, and this is really where I think the... You know, like you said, I would rather see it in a brown paper bag and know she's taking the money and going rather than affecting policy. Maybe it was in the shoe. Maybe it was in the shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's you know, the if, same shoe they threw at Bush. 
Now, it's funny, though, because, you know, you step back from the situation and you realize how, you know, with the recent ruling that came out about, yes, you can make political donations as much as you want. You know, again, you pointed on a great fact, Lou, and that is the fact that if an individual is prevented from spending money on something or limited by what they have, how will they ever overcome the bias of the press itself? You know, not, you know you, and just on a local level, just on a local level, how would you compete to get an independent candidate or not an, an official, you know, Republican or Democrat to be covered in some of the newspapers that are out there so that you could get your views across unless you were able to spend your, own, you know, huge amounts of money? It, 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 you're spot on. That, that's exactly right. And and Michael and X and, and for all, all all everybody that's been part of our group, which is growing more and more and, and, and we're getting more acceptances, that's one of the reasons we say it all the time. You own the media, you own the message. But if we're limited to that message, then what happens is is that only those that are in power are going to be able to get a message out. So any 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 new new person on the block, either either they're they're part of the group or or they don't get that message out. X and and that's what happens when we start limiting what we're doing. Yeah, and you know, it's it, the people when it comes to elections are constantly focusing in on, let's call it the periphery. It's a person that weighs three hundred pounds. And they think by switching to sweet and low, you're somehow going to get healthy. It's the, it, you have to look at the big issues, like what's the big key driving force. And the, the real key is the ability for an individual to get out a message in a playing field that's stacked against them, not because of you know some voter intimidation or something like that. The real intimidation and the real story is the fact that it's, the official candidates that are put up, just like Coke and Pepsi muscling out a guy on, on the soda shelf, you know, to get these messages across uh, is almost impossible in many ways, uh, shapes and forms, because of what has happened to the media being so controlled. Hey, you know, guys, we touched on this. I think last week, or but uh, just this past week, I, I was reading uh, Feinstein's bill to kill free speech of independent journalists has votes to pass the Senate, and this goes X and Michael certainly to what we're what we're talking about here after fending off. Uh, uh, numerous attacks on freedom of the Internet last year. Activists and independent journalists alike are now facing another hurdle that flies in the face of freedom of the press. And uh, although this bill is being sold by the uh, Obama administration and, uh, and establishing politicians in both parties as a positive step in protecting free speech, unfortunately, the name of this bill is highly deceiving, remembering just how unpatriotic the Patriot Act was. This new law, although deceivingly named, is likely to crush free freedom of speech of any journalist, not on a corporate payroll. You know, and go ahead, X, go ahead. Or and, Mike. And, you know, this, and this piggybacks on what we were talking about from last week. You know, when we were discussing the fact that Turkey shut down Twitter and YouTube because they were planning a false flag attack on themselves so that they could interfere in the Syrian civil war, and the fact that we were able to point out through all of the headlines and coverage in multiple, multiple corporate media news sites, whether it be Reuters, Fox News, you know, Jerusalem Post, I mean, across the entire spectrum, none of them talked about it. I'm pretty sure that if, if you go through and you found out other sources like, like Muckraker News that talked about this, well, he, they would now be qualified. They're no longer journalists. You know, this is the way they're going to control the system because, you know, what we'll do is we'll put a gag order on all of the <laughs> journalists that actually want to talk about the truth and want to talk about things that are off the grid that the mainstream media doesn't want to. The you know the bills pro- and 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 let's just go through that. The bills protections would apply to a covered journalist defined as an employee, independent contractor, or agent of an entity that disseminates news or information. The individual guys, okay, would have to have been employed for one year within the last twenty or three months within the last five years. It would apply to student journalists to, or or someone with a considerable amount of freelance work in the last five years. A federal judge now also would have the discretion to declare an individual as a covered journalist who would be granted the privileges of the law. Essentially, if you don't work for the likes of the dying mainstream media, the government can and will subpoena any journalist to force them to reveal their sources or face prosecution. 
Uh, you there know. you are, Lou. You hit on that, that last sentence. That is the key point there. It's the ability for a journalist who is now getting, let's say, the type of information out to the public, a whistleblowing type of situation. That's what they want to do. They want to stop whistleblowers from reporting on the crime and high treason that goes on within the halls of power of our country. For 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 folks maybe uh, that that might be more progressive liberal, let, just just think of this. Feinstein specifically singles out young entrepreneurs who start news websites as well as the WikiLeaks organization. You can see what what she said. Okay, and it goes on to videos and stuff like that. But this is what this is all about. This is all about limiting once again people's ability to get out there to dig to to maybe be real journalists. Last week we were at the YAL convention, uh, uh, the Young Americans for Liberty. Uh, yesterday we were at the uh, the Bigler. Uh, journalist uh, seminar in Wilkes University, and you know there are a lot of uh, young young entrepreneurs coming out of these colleges. Well, if all of a sudden now they're going to face these fines or face jail because maybe they dig into something that perhaps maybe these statists don't want you to to hear, then 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 we then we have problems. Yeah, and they should just call this the censorship bill. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to let, let's take some calls. So we got uh, Frank on uh, uh, Old Forge. Good morning, Frank. Frank, we got you. I guess uh, we'll, we'll get him back if we don't uh, if we don't have him here. Uh, so anyway, yeah, censor this uh, bill. You're exactly right there, uh, uh, Mr. X. Well, let's 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 flip over to something new, too. You know, we're, we're noticing this past week, the stock market for the last, you know, you know, first half since the beginning of the year has essentially gone nowhere and is now negative across the board on many of the international markets as well as the U.S. markets. And, it, it, you know, if you want to look for a correlation, the, the correlation we have is the moment, you know, the Ben Bernanke, Janet Yellen, uh, you know, team now has said, we're not going to be spending $85 billion a month. Uh, we're going to start cutting that down. It's currently $55 billion a month to try to suppress interest rates. So now that they're slowly turning off the tap of cheap money, the stock market's in a dead pattern, as a, and, and, and lately uh, it's getting worse. X, hold on for that. Let's see if I could uh, get Frank on without cutting him off again. Good morning, Frank. Uh, I'm back. I'm back, guys. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, it's, there's so many things to talk about this morning, but I think that issue in Nevada and the lines that are drawn to Harry Reid, you know, I was listening to Mark Levin last night, and basically what he said is there, there, this guy's really the last rancher, Clive Barnes. Yep. He's the last rancher there. They drove the rest of them out. It's supposed to be about an endangered turtle, which they just <laughs> they just uh, euthanized a thousand of them, so it's really not about the turtle. It's about uh, about another series of casinos or land development that they need this last tract of land. So it, it, this, is, this is ridiculous. But it does, and here's the question I'm going to ask, you know, when do we start shooting? Yeah, you know, and that's, that's exactly a big question. that. That is a big question, yeah. Frank, and and uh, and and that's and that, and that's what got got you know when I when I look at those pictures when I see those dogs out there and I see people getting tasered, and, tasered right, and 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 then and then you say then how do you stand up and then when do you stand up and then when do people when when does that start happening and that's you know that 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 is certainly a question, and hopefully we have people within our government that that are part of. Uh, Law enforcement that'll say, wait a minute, what 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 have I sworn yeah. an oath to? Is it is it to the government or is it to the Constitution? And 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 that's where it, th those lines are going to get uh, maybe blurred or or sticky for sure. Yeah, yeah Michael, you I had, think you, you pointed this out earlier. That the fact 15. that there's more people, there's more law enforcement there than probably right. on the local border for about a thirty mile stretch. Correct. Go ahead, uh, Frank. Yeah, so, you know, what, what, what is the cause here? What's the purpose? Uh, I heard it said, I can't take credit for this, but if those cars, cars were illegal aliens, they'd have all kind of relief and, and, and uh, fast and furious gun running going on there. So, you know, really, why are we there? It's one guy with, and the, plus they're killing the cattle. Plus there's they're killing one them. guy with, 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 I guess there's a thousand head of cattle. They're grazing on public lands, which, listen, if it's public lands, doesn't that mean our lands? So you have a guy with cows eating grass uh, on public lands. Is what kind of threat is there when you have the the, the Mexican border 
that has that has drug running. Uh, supposedly, the Mexican military uh, had our guys at gunpoint down there. Like this is ridiculous. But that's why I asked the question because at what so at some point it's going to be here in Wolf's Bear Scranton, and they're going to it's going to be on on, on some scale. But we're going to ask why are we doing this? But it's just they, the government, that's out of control. And this is what governments do. This is their, their progressive curve. They they enslave you. Yes. And and the whole hypocrisy that I, I constantly hear and you hear, Frank, and, and all of us here, is that, you know, we keep we keep hearing over and over again, we're a nation of laws, but we're only a nation of laws of, of, of the laws they want to enforce. We're going to take a break when we come back. Thanks, X, stay on here for a while. I, I, we're going to we're going to get on to the conversation that we originally started. You listen to Sanity Check, 888-577-4487. We'll be back. We're trying. We're trying to wake people up. 94.3 FM to talk. A sanity check. Libertarian Lou Tea Party Mike. Mr. X is on the phone. So X. So we were talking a little bit about the, the Fed pumping money into into the stock market. Certainly over the last few days, it, it's went down a few percentages. And we, we talked a little bit yesterday, too, also about this, this whole inflation. You know, what's, what's going on with that? Uh, meat prices are going through the roof. Uh, pork. Uh, certainly, it's it's not part of the uh, inflation numbers. I, I don't quite understand. I yeah, the, <laughs> the reason it's not in the inflation numbers, Lou, is what they do is they use this principle called substitution. So what happens is if the price of beef goes up, they assume you're going to switch to pork. And then when pork goes up, they say, well, you'll switch to chicken. And then when chicken goes up, they say you're going to sw- switch to beans. I mean, you know, with the way they're, they're going, you know, the next thing you know, you're going to switch from beans to sawdust. And they'll still say there's no inflation. <laughs> But the, but the scary part about this is, you know, whenever they give inflation numbers, they always strip out food and energy. And those are, vol- you know, those tend to move up and down a little bit more than some of the other components. But what people seem to forget is food and energy is what about half of the bottom 20 percent of the population spends their money on. I mean, when you don't have a lot of money, it's all about necessity. And, you know, food and energy, getting back and forth to work. You know, feeding your family, that's that's where a big part of your budget's going to go. So you can understand how in this type of environment that we've had, where beef prices have gone up an average of about 7% every single year for the last five years, uh, you can understand how hard it is for most people out there to, to kind of stretch a buck. Well, and, and now what about with this, uh, the money being pumped into the stock market? Certainly we understand it. I mean, what, how, in simple terms, how is, how is that affecting the market, in, at least in, 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 in your estimation, without, you know, unless the Fed continues to pump money, print money, uh, certainly it's, it, it, you're thinking it's just going to go stagnant, correct? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're probably looking at a period of time here, you know, at least for the next five years, where basically things are going to go sideways. And the reason for that is, remember, a lot of the corporate balance sheets that are out there, just like individuals have spent, you know, every two or three years, they've been able to refinance and refinance and refinance into lower and lower rates and have more money in their pockets. Well, corporations have been doing the same thing, and a good amount of their earnings that they report have actually not been because they're selling more widgets. It's just because they've been able to cut their borrowing costs by such a significant factor. And now that we're at the long end of this game, you know, where we've had, you know, almost close to three decades here of falling interest rate prices, that source of revenue for companies is going to completely dry up. So in an example of, let's say, for every dollar worth of profit, maybe Walmart makes, maybe 15 cents of it was coming specifically because they were able to roll debt. And that's not going to be there anymore. So now they're just left with 85 cents on that dollar from before because that, that's played out. For those new listeners, Michael, and, and, and I keep saying this, I know more and more people are, are listening uh, they, for, for a number of reasons, uh, but certainly uh, there's, there's a huge audience out there that that understand that we need court reform and and that cuts across once again all political boundaries what what we suggest people to to do is is just like we say uh, x when you come on don't believe a word we say just google who owns the federal reserve uh 
and do your own research because the Federal Reserve is is neither federal nor is there a reserve, and you have to start doing your own research. Michael, talking about uh, you know uh, a nation of laws, certainly this past week uh, the IRS has been in. Uh, in the news, not only in Texas, but uh, around the country. And once again, talking about laws and talking about a nation of laws. What has happened with that investigation? Did the IRS break laws? Why aren't, why isn't this, why isn't more being done? But uh, we just got this, uh, I got an email uh, from the Campaign for Liberty and Ron Paul. Just, uh, j- just days ago, the IRS handed the Campaign for Liberty a hefty fine and demanded we turn over sensitive contributor information. Uh, If we don't comply with the IRS outrageous demands for sensitive donor information, I'm afraid we'll face additional fines that could cripple Campaign for Liberty and perhaps even force us to shut our doors. Once again, the force of government that, that, you know, just coming in and, and, you know, going after the Campaign for Liberty. We we do. We've been we've been part of the Campaign for Liberty, Michael, since we started the show. And and certainly been a supporter of what Ron Paul has been able to put together. But that once that force of government comes in, uh, you know, it, it, it this they use it to 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 shut down debate, shut down information that they want out of here and, and why it's so important to have uh, an aggressive free and independent press. You know, and, and what really is concerning to me is that. You know, here we are right in the center of really what I think a great focal point of talking about the IRS, you know, Lois Lerner and everything that's going on, and yet it hasn't stopped the government from doing exactly what they're being accused of again. So there's total disregard, and, and we do have a set of laws, as you mentioned earlier, Lou, but those laws only pertain to certain groups, and it's those groups that really, as you spoke about, having a word against a government whether it's at the local level, state or federal level, that that speak out against the wrongdoings. You know, you, you look at the situation in with the IRS in Dallas where they're being accused of Bingo. essentially in my mind, campaigning for, the IRS campaigning for the left, campaigning for Obama. Yeah. You know, having having individuals with the IRS speaking to folks calling in and saying, you know, and having a big mantra of, of things being said to the people calling in, why you shouldn't vote for Republicans, why that just means that the poor get poor and the rich get richer, and, and, and yet nothing is done. Can you imagine if it's the other way around, if you have IRS agents on the phone doing the opposite? And, I mean, and, this, they'd be jailed by now, Lou. And that's where the outrage should come in from everybody, Michael, and, that, and that's what's so important about this, is about what we're saying is, is that what happens if it was on the other side? And it will happen on the other side. That's what happens with government. You know, depending on who's in power, you know, if you don't, if, you, if you're not a nation of laws, if you're not going to apply the laws equally, if we're only going to pick and choose on who we apply the laws to, then who's ever in power is going to use those, those agencies, these huge amounts of agencies. One of the reasons why we have to constantly keep going back, a limited government, I mean, because as these agencies get bigger and who's ever in power could use those agencies and they've done it throughout our history. Throughout our history, whether it's Hoover, you could go all the way back, and it doesn't matter if it's on the right or the left. But if we don't aggressively go after these agencies when they break the law, then what what it's doing is just opening up these abuses or the ability to, to, to abuse folks, no matter who it is. So if, if I was on the left, if I thought, say, oh, okay, well, I'm an Obama fan, that's no big deal. It should be a real big deal, because guess what? Next time when Obama's out, you're going to have a Bush in there going after your guys. And and you know, if we it, allow this just to go on, what happens is, is that, you know, well, we know what happens. Well, and Lou, that's, that's important about what you bring up is, is the fact that the political hypocrisy of, on both the left and the right is so pervasive uh, that, that it's shocking because what we're really looking at is the fact that there are groups on both the left and the right that really are authoritarians at heart, and they only have a problem with a dictator or a rogue government when it's not their government. But if it's their guys in power, they'll go along for the full ride. And back it to, to those dying breaths. Go ahead, Michael. You know, and I just wanted to bring up the point, when you brought up the agencies, and I think so many of these agencies were just really put into place not to, 
you know, watch the environment, not to watch energy, not to watch education, but essentially to find a way around the Constitution. So, so, you know, we can't constitutionally do this because we need to create a law to do it, which the American public will not put up with. But we'll use the agencies to use their power to be able to put into the things, give teeth to the things that they really want to have teeth without having to do it constitutionally, Lou. And this is why we need to get rid of a lot of these agencies, or at least minimize them. You know, I look at, as you spoke earlier, about the campaign contributions and and how (laughs) double standard that is. I mean, they're they're on the Koch brothers for their influence, and yet we say nothing about George Soros. So this is where you... you, And and this was even on Fox News, which is supposed to be the new voice. And yet they let so many of these things pass by almost as if they have a governor put on them that will only get to allow certain things to get out. And, and I hope the American people are really doing their own research because it drives me crazy. I want to throw a rock through my TV every day. <laughs> you know, so, so this is what I think we have to look at these agencies to say, how are they changing our laws without actually changing our laws? And they are. I mean, get you know, down in, in Nevada right now. You know, when yeah, you you're going to use the, e- the EPA and the turtle to throw this man off the land that he's used for 140 years to graze his cattle. When you're talking about George Soros, I could care less about George Soros. What, who I could really care about, Mike, and I do, I, and I know where you're going with that, is I'm more concerned about the about the news agencies, the MSNBCs, yes. and, and, and how much power they have to get a message out. we got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to change gears. we got Tara Koval in, in, in studio with us. We're going to talk about gag orders and about our upcoming rally. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, you're listening to Sanity Check, 888-577-4487. We'll be back. The answer you're looking for lies right here. Sanity Check with Tea Party Mike, Libertarian Lou, Saturday mornings, 94.3 FM. We want to see. We want to see people be brave, and and it's not. It's easier said than done sometimes. Ninety four three FM, the talker. You're listening to Sanity Check, Libertarian Lou, Tea Party Mike, and that number here is eight 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 five seven seven four four eight seven. In studio, we have Tara Koval. Good morning, Tara. And then Lou. <laughs> hey, listen. You wrote a great piece here on gag orders, uh, further evidence of uh, uh, out of control judiciary, and certainly your co uh, co sponsoring or co organizing uh, the rally that uh, is coming up uh, to bring awareness to what is going on in the courts, and and that's going to be April twenty sixth for judicial reform. Uh, in let's start off with the gag orders, and and we're going to play a little clip from that Colorado uh, judge here in a moment. But what were you able to find out about? I mean, as you're looking at this, I mean, certainly you, you wrote a great piece, and we encourage people to go to the Independent Gazette and uh, uh, to read about it. But uh, uh, give us a little insight on on the story itself. Well, I think the bottom line with with the gag orders, Lou, is that they're being used essentially to protect the corrupt, to protect the judges, to protect those in positions of of power that are kind of abusing their authority. Um, they're, They're not by any stretch protecting the children in these cases. In fact, they're actually doing more harm to these already abused, already traumatized children. Uh, certainly, you you focused in on 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 one case uh, out in Western Pennsylvania, and 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 it was I think it was eye opening for you, correct? Extraordinarily yeah. eye opening. Mm-hmm. And why is that? Why did uh, you know just j- just the, the way it was done and how it's being done? Or the it's so overwhelmingly blatant. I ca- I was just absolutely amazed at the way this judge handled herself and i mean even when they when the attorney filed to vacate the order 10 years later 10 years he, later isn't ten, it? 10 years later after the initial order was issued the family tried to to file to vacate the order and their attorney said to the judge well these children are now grown adults because right. she she initially you know she initially instated the order claiming that it was to protect the children right and the attorney says, well, they're all adults now, so who are we protecting? 
And the only answer the judge has for this family is, oh, well, an order is an order. It's an order is an order. And and just and just and Michael, just just to put this out there, you know, um, with this gag order, right? We have we have we have a woman who uh, who was issued a gag order. You're saying ten years ten years ago, not to talk about the case because supposedly it was to protect the children. How mm-hmm. old are how how old are the children now? I believe Michael Clark in the article is 27. 27 years old. So now they go in, and, and she's still not allowed to talk about this. Let's just play that one clip. Are you, are you queued up for that? Uh, let you, let's just listen to what happened in Colorado, and then we're going to come back to this, because this is really important. And this and, and, and this whole idea, Tara, is, is that, and one of the reasons why you even helped them get this rally off the ground is to start raising awareness, and we're certainly going to spend a little time on that. But just let's, let's remind folks what happened in Colorado. <laughs> Our questions about an international fight over child custody has a judge in Denver upset. Not that two Colorado boys were sent to live with family in Mexico despite concerns for their safety. No, the judge is angry because the case is being talked about in the media. At an emergency hearing today in juvenile court, she threatened criminal charges against anyone who releases details about the case. You see, here, here's what's happening with this, Michael and Tara, and you, you know this too. They just, you know, they just talk these laws into existence. And, and with the power, in other words, like they don't want, they don't want any light on what they're doing whatsoever. We're going to be, I'm, I'm going to lay this out there now. I'm going to, uh, if I can, because we have some, uh, uh, I have a sick uncle in New York City, and I, I plan on going to this hearing on Monday. Otherwise, we're going to have somebody else. But, I'm, Michael, I'm serious. I, I'm, I'm, I would not be surprised. Surprise! If not only I'm ushered out of the courtroom for sitting there, it, it might be worse. They might wind up throwing me in jail just for being there. And and you know, I interviewed some individuals this past week. They 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 really said, listen, and and you have to hear the. the if it, I could use a whole show just to lay out the case, but. It, it was it, it was compulsive. It really was. And and when you look at what's going on with these things, and 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 it's going to be in front of uh, Judge Corb, Trish, Judge Trish. And once again, the last time I was there, the whole the whole case was done in chambers. And Tara, you've seen that, and you you know you know how they you know so they issue the gag orders, or they, and and it's not right, Michael. If we're going to have a judicial system, it needs to be out in the open. I mean, there has to be some light put on what's going on in uh, behind closed doors here, and that's why we had kids for cash. Our camera was not allowed inside the courtroom today, but this is the first time that I was allowed to sit in and listen to what was said. Last week, they kicked me out, and the judge said in court, and I'm quoting here, she is heartsick and saddened at the news coverage that has suddenly been focused on this case. She's sad about the news coverage. She threatened criminal charges in jail time for anyone who even talks to us about the case. Do you remember? We, we invited her on the show. I called her up and invited her on the show. I said, we're going to talk about it because, Mike, you know, you know, you listen to King. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to let no illegal injunction turn us around. When do we start standing up and saying, you know what? You know, just because you're up there, you know, issuing these orders, is that the right thing? Or if it's a wrong thing to do, we have to stand up and 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 stand our ground, whether it's in Nevada or whether it's right here in in Scranton, Pennsylvania, going into these courtrooms and saying, you know what, what's right is right. Go ahead, Tara or Michael or. Well, I, I just want to bring up the point Lou, that that here are the judges who are put in place in the power to defend the Constitution, and yet here she is just trampling right over it by taking away the freedom of the press, Lou. And, and this is if this doesn't get people ticked off, I don't know what is, Lou. Well, I think not only that, but she, <laughs> they actually stated that there were concerns for the children's safety. So then the judge comes back and says that she's heart sick over the media coverage. What about the children involved in this case? Why isn't she heart sick over what's happening to them? And 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 in the in the piece that you wrote, uh, Tara, which is getting picked up, I'm telling you right now, it start it start. <laughs> you, you, people are going to start checking what you know what what you wrote out. Expect I'll, I'll tell you right now because in this particular case, even though you tied it into the whole custody for cash, it was it was really around the gag orders, and this took place in Pittsburgh. I know I'm starting to get all of a sudden inquiries from Pittsburgh. You know what's this whole thing about? What's you know who wrote the story? Blah blah blah. But at the end of the day. It's the same thing. I mean, Michael, if I remember correctly, wasn't 
was this brought up? Or was it like a lifetime ban or something? Like, you know, you're not allowed to talk about this. Case. When, when are you allowed to talk about these cases? This kid's, what, 27 years old? And it is actually a, a, a lifelong ban is against it? the mother. Yes, she is never, ever, ever allowed to speak about any of it. Isn't that great, Michael? I mean, isn't this unbelievable? Is anybody listening? Hopefully they're listening. You know, I, I, I encourage folks to come with me on Monday. It's 2 o'clock in the courthouse in Scranton. I'm I'll going be to surprised be there. if they let anybody in because I've seen them kick family members out and put bailiffs in front of Thank the door. You, Grandparents I'm... not allowed to hear what's happening to their grandchildren. And, and that's why we're bringing this up, Michael, and that's why we're staying on this and X. And, you know, this, this, is, this is happening on a daily basis. I'm not joking when I said last was last week or the week before, you know, in, in, in Judge Trish's courtroom. The whole thing was done in chambers. And and it, 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 it's just outrageous. It really is. They, and Tara, they make it obvious that they don't you, want you to know. They make it very they obviously make it obvious they, and they don't, don't care. want you to know. And they don't care. In fact, and we've brought up, we said we want black boxes, we want some other things in there with video. Uh, both me and John DiLiberto, we interviewed an a individual, I think it was yesterday or maybe the day before, the, the days are getting so blurred with all the people that are calling. But the same thing, uh, the, 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 the guy told me, he says, listen, the judge told me something which was really outrageous, and then he went on to say, hey, and if you think it's going to be in the transcript, you ain't going to find it. We're hearing that, too. You know, we have lawyers. They, they, they get the transcripts. The transcripts are gone. They're missing. They're, they're changed. Tara, you've heard the same stories, correct? Absolutely. There's paperwork missing with the guardian at litem. You're asked to fill out a big, huge stack of paperwork. You're asked to provide witnesses, and suddenly that whole list of witnesses just vanishes. So it's give me gone. some good news. What the, this, this, this April 26th, I can tell you right now, hey, Michael, you know, remember we had OG Law and, and, uh, um, on, on a show? A compelling story. So they're on tour now, Michael. They're on tour. OG Law, uh, God's uh, a Love at Work. And uh, what what I, I, I've, I've seen them live. And, and I got to tell you, folks, this is really, really cool to see. He uh, uh, he travels now with a with a jail cell that breaks out into a stage, and they they get on stage and uh, it, just just good stuff. And Tara, and I think that's what you want to do with this rally. It's not just going to be about doom and gloom. It's going right. to be uplifting. You got you got some family stuff going on. You got face painting. You got other people that are coming there, and and we want to give people solutions, Michael, or, or you know they have a synergy and and come listen to what's going on. And I think that's that's our message here today right and i think i mean my hope at least with the rally not only obviously to get the word out there is that there's so many other families out there that are terrified to terrified. speak up Thank you, and Tara. they need to know that that there's so many other people in that position with them and and they do have friends and they do have you know somebody who's going through this with them and that can understand and empathize and relate and, and this this is april 26th uh, really from 11 to 4, but the main thing is going to be from uh, noon to 3. And Michael Tower has promised good weather. So, yes. so. <laughs> well, Beautiful you know, weather. Tara, you, Tara, you mentioned about people Michael, being terrified. Mike, we're done. Michael, we, we're done. Michael, we're done. <laughs> Once again, well, the, fa the, fa the fastest hour in radio. You got it, Michael. We'll see you next week. Take care. God bless.